Where is God when we are suffering? As our world faces unprecedented times during the time of the COVID pandemic and the quarantines, we're going to talk about finding God in the midst of suffering. Also, our special guest, Erwin Lutzer, will join us on today's edition of Truth for a New Generation. As our world faces unprecedented times, it seems like the COVID-19 pandemic and all of the associated ramifications control our lives, whether it's wearing a mask out in public or our, our favorite stores aren't open or the inability to go to church, interact with people like we did before, or go to our favorite restaurant. The whole world has been touched by the pandemic. And many people are asking, you know, where is God in all of this? I'm hurting. I'm afraid. I don't, uh, I can't work my job and get my hours in and get my pay. What will the future hold? People are concerned. And on today's edition of Truth for New Generation, we're going to drill down and talk about finding God in the midst of suffering. I'm very excited about the content. Number one, because the Word of God does have a great answer and a lot of comfort for us at this time. I'm also excited about our very special guest, my longtime colleague and friend, Dr. Erwin Lutzer, who will join us in just a moment. But I want to thank you for watching, and thanks for taking a few moments to really ponder some of these questions, because throughout history, people have asked the question, you know, where is God when it hurts? Scholars call this a problem of pain and suffering, the problem of evil. Now, some people nowadays are saying, well, maybe these are plagues from God. You know, we've read about the plagues of Egypt uh, when uh, Moses stared down Pharaoh, or we read about the book of Revelation and the troublesome times that will follow on planet Earth during the tribulation. Is this a plague from God, some are asking. Now, some people throw up their hands in disbelief, and like an atheist, they'll say, well, you know, there's problem, there's pain in the world, there's suffering, therefore, there must not be a God. Deism says, well, maybe God exists, but he wound up the universe and he walked away, and we're just kind of alone in the world. Who really knows? But really, neither of these answers are completely adequate. And so I want to talk a little bit about pain and suffering and how it might just actually represent an opportunity to turn to God. Uh, in the Bible, there are a lot of people that really legitimately suffered. Joseph, in Genesis 37 through 45, Joseph suffered greatly. Daniel, in, in the Old Testament, Daniel was a devout leader for for God, and yet he was a political prisoner, he was a slave, he was thrown in the lion's den, and uh, in, in many ways he could have given up and just lapsed into despair, be, thinking God had abandoned him, and yet, like Joseph and so many others, standing true and trusting God, even while he had to wait, it represented a time of transformation in his life, and God lifted him up and blessed him greatly for his faithfulness. The greatest example of suffering of all in the Bible, I would say, is Jesus Christ, who lived a sinless life, taught the sublime truths of God. He represented everything that uh, the Father had given him to do. In John 17, Jesus said, I finished the work you gave me to do, and yet he was nailed to the cross. And the Bible says, uh, predicting the ministry of Jesus in Isaiah 53, like a lamb led to the slaughter, he didn't even open his mouth. And Jesus hung on the cross, paying for the sins of the world. What suffering and really injustice that was, although he was happy to do it because he did it in love. Now, all of us will suffer some things in life, but thankfully we'll never suffer like any of those things. Uh, but the Bible tells us, in the case of Joseph of old, that even though he spent years, more than a decade, falsely imprisoned, when he did go to work in the house of a man named Potiphar, the Bible says that Potiphar could see that God was with him, and Potiphar gave him favor because he was a godly person. Later on, he would serve in Pharaoh's court, and people could see that the Spirit of God was upon him. And it's not easy, I will grant you. 
whether it's a job issue, financial struggles, family stresses, or just watching the news every day and wanting to see what in the world is going on and how is all of this going to play out, it is not easy, I'll grant you. But one of the things that I, look, we have as a scriptural reality, and we've got many historical precedents that will concur, and I could agree in my own life, if we will turn our situation over to the Lord and worship while we wait, and look, it's okay to just to honestly pour out our heart and say, God, I don't know what to do. It's okay to say, God, I'm afraid. God, I, I really need you to show up. Lord, I need you at this moment. And God will do that. He really will. So I'm not minimizing the pain and the inconvenience and the, the cost. We can't even calculate the, the trillions of dollars worldwide that this thing is costing us here in America. Uh, the national debt is going up as the government is giving stimulus checks to try to help tide people over. And I, I think that's a good thing, a necessary thing. But here's the thing. Uh, it really does represent an opportunity. Because if, and I will say this, not only as a Christian, not only as a minister, but as a student of history, if you will turn your situation over to the Lord, God will come through for you. Now, in just a few moments, we've got a very special guest that will be on. I look forward to a conversation with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, who is a, a renowned scholar, and he's got a new book, and we'll talk about that. But right now, let me just encourage you to not lose hope. We've got some information in the context of today's program that I think is going to be a great encouragement to you. But at this time where the world has been hit with the pause button, everybody's world is stopped during this season. Therein lies an opportunity. And rather than say, why, God, why, or where are you, God, ask this question, what? What can I learn from this? There was a time in my life when I was living for myself and I was very far away from God. And in fact, maybe on some future show, I'll share my story because I think it's probably going to amaze you what God did in my life. But I will say, I will say when not only my life was pretty much smashed to bits and my family as well, and we found ourselves bankrupt, broke, and about to become homeless, it really was the moment that our family and myself specifically turned to God, and our life has never been the same. So please stay tuned to Truth for a New Generation. We're going to talk about finding God in times of pain and suffering, and we've got a very special guest, Erwin Lutzer, right after this. Stay with us. TNG is back after this brief break. My beliefs aren't exactly popular. You can tell me I'm on the wrong side of history all you want, but you won't change my mind. That's because I'm standing on something that doesn't change. Therefore, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. As Christians, it's important to remember that no matter how good or bad things may seem, nothing changes our King or our call. Welcome back. I'm so excited about the guest that I want to introduce in just a moment. Dr. Erwin Lutzer uh, is a renowned voice for Christianity around the world, and I'm proud to say he's been a friend and colleague for a number of years. He graciously, nearly 20 years ago, began to speak for us in our Truth for New Generation conferences, and when we went to Colorado and were working with James Dobson, he was on Dr. Dobson's radio show a number of times, has spoken for us all around the country, and I want to say before we interview Dr. Lutzer, uh, how he has shaped my life with his books, yes, but also with the example of, of the Christian leader that he is. I've watched and followed him for so many years, and to say that he has impacted my life deeply is an understatement. For many years, he and his wonderful wife, Rebecca, have lived in the Chicago area. He was pastor of the historic Moody Church for a number of years and is heard uh, in three radio broadcasts, Running to Win, Songs in the Night, the Moody Church Hour. He is an academic. He is uh, a great prolific author, but most of all, he's a shepherd. And Dr. Lutzer personifies what the New Testament says that a Christian leader and a minister of the gospel should be. Very honored to have him on to talk about his latest book, Pandemics, Plagues, and Natural Disasters. What is God trying to tell us? Dr. Lutzer, thanks for making time for us and welcome to Truth for a New Generation. 
I'm so glad to be with you and to connect with you, Alex, and uh, your wonderful audience that is watching. We're going to be talking about something that is very important. Indeed, indeed. Let me ask you, Dr. Lutzer, what prompted you to write this book? Well, of course, the immediate cause was the pandemic, corona, but um, actually the book not only deals with that, it talks about uh, that, but also earthquakes and tidal waves, grasshopper plagues in Africa. How do we interpret natural disasters biblically? And so the subtitle that you referenced is very important, namely, what is God saying to us? Because there are many false prophets out there who are predicting that they know exactly how long it's going to last and so forth. And uh, what we have to do, Alex, is to ground everything that we are saying in the Bible. And five of the chapters in this book have to do with what God is saying to us based on Scripture. And then I also give a response and uh, tell people, what do you do when you meet an atheist or someone who turns away from the faith? How do we handle those kinds of objections? Uh, in your experience, ha have you ever uh, covered anything like this before that's occurred in history? I mean, do you, in what ways do you think the COVID pandemic is unique, Dr. Lutzer? Well, in one sense, it's unique because it goes around the world. And uh, I don't know that there's ever been a pandemic that has been worldwide like this one. But in another way, Alec, we need to be able to uh, give some people encouragement. The church has been here before. In the days of the Roman Empire, when the Black Plague came and, uh, you know, a quarter of the world's population died, Christians responded differently than the pagans. As a matter of fact, the Christians uh, acted in such a way that they were even willing to risk their lives on behalf of the pagans. And the pagans said of the Christians, they carry their dead as if in triumph. So what we find in those days is that uh, Christians endured this. They were witnesses of it. Let me give you one more example. Cyprian of North Africa in about the year 250, when the plague came, he said in effect that it was good God was using it for good because many of the pagans were believing the gospel because they asked the Christians, where does this hope come from? And let's jump a couple of centuries ahead, quite a few centuries, to Martin Luther. When the plague came to Wittenberg in 1537, he was asked to flee because he was famous, but he said, no, I'm staying and I'm helping. And if I die doing this, I will have died a good death because the Bible says greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. So he and Katie actually took sick people into their own home. So Alec, is it unique? Yes, because it's worldwide. But let us remember that we're not facing anything that the church of Jesus Christ has not had to face before, even in a very much more uh, worse way. Wonderful. Uh, I've got a few more questions, but I want to tell people where they can find this book, Dr. Lutzer, and it's Pandemics, Plagues, and Natural Disasters. I urge you folks to get this book and read it. Dr. Lutzer, where can they find it? They can go to MCM. Now, MCM stands for Moody Church Media. MCMoffer.com mcmoffer.com. Now, Alex, I have to tell you that I believe very deeply in this book. You and I have both written books, and we know that we're always excited about what we've done. Absolutely. But in all the books that I've written, because I deal with issues regarding God's role in natural disasters and how he stands behind it and ultimately is sovereign over it all, I deal with lessons that we have to learn and the fact that, uh, Alex, this is very important, these natural disasters are previews 
of coming judgments. Mm -hmm. You read the book of Revelation and you find everything that's happening today. And in the book of Revelation, it is much more, uh, it is worse. And if you think it's bad today, think of the tribulation. And God is warning us and letting us know that the worst is yet to come. But then he's also saying, I provided a way of escape. You don't have to experience the judgment of God. And so the book is very gospel-centered. So I'll give that a reference again. MCM, which stands, of course, for Moody Church Media. MCMoffer.com. Uh, your listeners can get it there. Dr. Lutzer, a lot of people, um, they're, they're asking questions about where is God and how can I connect with the Lord right now? And between unemployment, financial issues, and health issues, people are afraid. I want you as a pastor right now to speak to people that are very, very apprehensive about what tomorrow might hold. The election, people are worried about that. Uh, draw us to a place of hope and encouragement in this uh pretty disheartening time we find ourselves in. Ultimately, Alex, we have to see God in the midst of this. You know, I make the point that if COVID-19, if COVID-19 is out of God's hands, then I am out of God's hands because any one of us could get the virus and die of the disease. So we need to understand that ultimately we are in God's hands. And this isn't just a matter of words. Jesus said very clearly, consider the lilies of the field, consider the sparrow that falls to the ground that your heavenly father sees, and the very hair of your head is numbered. So we need to remember that God walks with us through this. He does not abandon us in hard times. And I know that we've never been here before. We have some new pathways, but God is going to be with us all the way. One other quick thing, the Bible does not teach that we are going to be exempt from these kinds of things. I offer in this book a hope that is so secure that even if you don't get your job back, even if you aren't healed and things don't improve, the fact is that you can continue to believe because we have a hope that is eternal. And so we don't have to. Last part of Romans 8, will famine separate us from the love of God, destitution, the sword? No, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. So God does not exempt us from these trials, but he takes us through them but he assures that he walks with us through it. So to the person out there that's struggling, I want to say this, that there is a biblical hope that is not dependent on your circumstances or even your earthly future. It is a future hope, and that's the thing that motivates us during hard times. Folks, the book is Pandemics, Plagues, and Natural Disasters. And the author is Dr. Erwin Lutzer. I urge you to read this book. It's a phenomenal book, as all of his books are. Uh, let me ask you this. What would you like to see the Holy Spirit do within the church? You know, uh, the, the church in North America is really kind of a, uh, a mixed bag right now. Some are thriving, some are declining. Uh, what is your prayer for the future of the American church? My prayer is for the American church is that the church would be very strong and react to this pandemic differently than the world, to know that we are called to this moment by God. Something else, Alex, I've noticed that uh, as a result of this, you have all of these prayer meetings, virtual prayer meetings, and I've been a part of some of them, and obviously I support them. But isn't it interesting that when God begins to threaten our bodies, then we begin to pray and to pray for his protection and call out to God. But oftentimes there is such an erosion within the church, spiritually speaking, and that doesn't necessarily attract our attention. So we need to look at the word of God and say, what is God saying to us? And I would say to the people of the church, your church needs your support now more than ever. Don't give up on the church. 
continue to support it and to the pastors that are out there. I know that we can't do what we used to do in terms of personal contact, but what we can do is to continue to minister and the people of God need their shepherd now more than ever. So this is a moment for the church to be the church and not simply shrink away in fear. God bless you. What a great answer. What a great answer. And uh, let me say this. I know you've got another book coming out. And so we've got to get you back on Truth for a New Generation. And I don't know when we might resume our conferences like you and I have done for so many years. But uh, at least we've got this. And uh, in a way, there's maybe potential for more people to be reached than ever before, even in spite of the lack of uh, physical events and contact, isn't there? There really is, and you know, most churches, including the Moody Church, find that their virtual services online have more people tuning in than were physically present before. Now, I think that we have to get back to church, to relationships, to friendships, to that, but uh, we have a gift in technology yeah. that previous generations doesn't didn't have. And people can continue to stay connected. I tell pastors, spend a lot of time on your telephone these days. Call people, pray with them, encourage them, and remain strong in the midst of all that's going on. Indeed. Dr. Erwin Lutzer, thank you so much for being on today. We look forward to our next visit on Truth for a New Generation. Thanks, Alex, and God bless you. God bless you, my friend. We're going to pull away. We'll be right back after this. Earning a doctoral degree isn't just about the prestige. It's about achieving something extraordinary and becoming the kind of leader who inspires others. At Liberty University, we believe greatness is measured by what you give. So while our number of online doctoral programs keeps going up, our tuition prices haven't for the last four years. Over 50 doctoral degrees, one new infinite possibilities. Welcome back to Truth For New Generation. Alex McFarland here, so glad that you're watching. And wow, I hope you enjoyed that segment with Dr. Erwin Lutzer. And uh, it sure is a thrill to get to see this person who I've worked with for a lot of years. And you know, I'm just amazed at the gift of technology that even though you know years ago we would have had to have flown people to the studio, now we can just do it by video. And so we look forward to bringing you a lot of other guests to inform and inspire and equip. And really, that's the opportunity that we've got right now. I mean, everybody has had time. And frankly, one of the blessings of this has been to just to reconnect with family and reinstitute family mealtime. But let me give a few takeaways as we, we realize, look, God is in control. God created the universe. God can take care of us through this. And really, only God can take care of this. So what are some things that we do? First of all, let me encourage you to pray. And I know that's just the real spiritual thing to do. But no, look, prayer is the nerve that moves the muscle of God. So let me be specific. Number one, pray for wisdom. The Bible says in James 1 verse 5 that if anyone lacks wisdom, we can ask God. He gives abundantly and he does not withhold. So number one, pray for wisdom. Number two, pray for leaders. Uh, the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy that we are to pray for leaders and for those in authority and, and pray for people even that are not of your political persuasion. Pray for the leaders you follow. Pray for the leaders that you may disagree with but we are to pray uh, for the Spirit of God to lead those who lead the country. And then I would say, thirdly, pray for the salvation of others. We need to pray that people will come to know the Lord and be saved. And, and the Bible tells us that that's something that Christians are always to pray for. And then I would encourage you to pray for Christian uh, workers. There are missionaries around the world, people doing great things for the gospel, and they need their support. Your pastor needs to be prayed for. So pray for Christian leaders. Then I would say to pray for healing. Pray that God will put a stop to this, and God can do this. God rules and overrules. So pray for healing. And then finally, listen, pray that God will enable you to grow. Grow in wisdom. Read. Stretch yourself. Don't just veg out watching 
you know, cat videos on YouTube. I mean, this is a time to really invest and grow. We're doing that here at Truth for New Generation, and we're praying for you, the viewers. And, and finally, really think about this. As we, we, we're not always asking why, 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 but what? Pray for your preparation for the future ways that God wants to use you. One of the beautiful things of the Christian worldview is that life is sacred in every context. And as long as you're in the land of the living, God has work for you to do. Uh, you might become a missionary. You might, become, you might start a new business. You might get involved in your church and serve on a committee. So this is an opportunity. I could tell you so many stories, and I'm sure you know, of the people that were brought to their knees in life but it was that opportunity for a brand new chapter. So give your heart and your life a blank page for a loving Lord to fill in the details. And don't miss the opportunity that this otherwise painful, tragic time actually represents. And know that we're praying for you as well. I've got a brand new book coming out, America Under Assault, What We Must Do to Save Our Country. And do you know what? In praying and saving our nation, we're actually going to benefit ourselves as well. That's our prayer for you, and that's our challenge for you today. What is truth? What is truth? Shabam, there it is, the big kahuna, the spicy enchilada, the fizzy lifting drink. The claim God exists is not a subjective claim. This is not an evidence problem. So, like, truth is basically subjective. Yeah, yeah. emotional. This is Debunk TV. I hope this edition of the Truth for a New Generation program has been an encouragement to you. I'm thankful that you're watching, and I want to say thanks to our sponsors like Liberty University, Bob and Bob and Debunked, and thanks to you for praying for us. And let me encourage you as we close to consider supporting Truth for a New Generation. We're creating so much content, touching so many lives. For your gift of at least $50, I'm going to send you the DVD and book set of 21 Toughest Questions Your Kids Will Ask about God and Christianity. And for an additional $25, you get the Truth For A New Generation Apologetics t-shirt. You're gonna love it. So please pray, promote, and support what we're doing. You can give securely online at truthforanewgeneration.com or you can mail us as well. And the info is there on the screen. But again, in these times of pandemic, stay encouraged, keep your eyes on the Lord, look for ways to serve and encourage others and know that God is with you. He will never leave or forsake you. And so let's cleave to him tightly at this time and always. Thanks for watching. God bless you. See you next time.